you have cats available? I do. You want, we'll, we'll talk. We'll talk. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I think we're recording. Yes, we are. So hi, everybody. I'm Luann Jennings. I run the Greenhouse Program at Creative Waco and the Professional Development Programs to help artists um, be able to make more art by helping them make more money. And I want to introduce John Passavant, who is the new CEO of Startup Waco, which is a local business dedicated to helping entrepreneurs start and run um, solopreneur businesses and small businesses in Waco. Um, it is based in the space currently known as Hustle, but soon that's going to be changing, so it'll all be called Startup Waco. Um, in the Woolworth yeah. Building downtown um, on Austin Avenue, so across the street and up a block from Cultivate 712, which is where I'm sitting now. And John is just doing amazing work and we're so glad to have him here. And one of the things he's been doing is he's gotten really involved in helping the city and the county to distribute funding that's been given to us through the government by the CARES Act and helping with other relief efforts for small businesses. Um, as somebody who's worked in the creative industries himself, John has a particular interest in helping those of us who are creatives um, to be able to continue to do this work by helping us get the, um, the money we need, the funding we need to be able to stick with this and not have to pivot into a full-time job doing something else. So thank you so much, John. Um, John is an mm -hmm. entrepreneur himself. His wife is originally from this area. They have three young kids and a new puppy dog. Um, so we're really glad to have John here with us and he is, like I said, I'm at Cultivate. John's down the street from me at Startup Waco. Um, so I'm just going to turn it over to John now and he's going to talk you through the application and how artists in particular, creatives in particular, who might not be able to show their income and their losses in ways that some other small businesses could, can utilize this uh, grant uh, to be able to help us stay afloat. Yeah. So, thanks very much, John. I'm gonna mute myself. Okay, thank you, Luann. It's, it's good to be with uh, all of you. So um, I think it might be helpful to just give a little bit of background about uh, the genesis of this grant and how it came about, which I think it'll help provide a little bit of context for anyone who is um, thinking about applying or, or is currently in the application process. Um, and it could help answer some questions. My, my full expectation is that for anyone who has heard of this or is curious about it and decides to, um, to take this step and, and apply, you're gonna run into some questions and some, some terms that you aren't familiar with. There's plenty in there that I had to look up as I was going through it for the first time. Um, and there's a really good reason why all of these things are in there. So I just want to set, uh, set some expectations and give a little bit of context so you understand what's, what's actually happening. So uh, back in, gosh, I wanna say it was either late, uh, the end of March or the beginning of April, um, we started having some of these preliminary conversations of what a local relief grant would look like. And we saw um, federally, we saw a lot of grant programs uh, coming to the table in the form of the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, in the form of the uh, Paycheck Protection uh, Program. And, uh, and these are all federal programs administered by the SBA. They're authorized by Congress, administered by the Small Business Administration to help small businesses in America weather this, uh, this crisis that we were all experiencing. Um, once those sort of got up and going, and we did a lot of work um, in those early weeks to, to try to highlight what those programs uh, were meant to do and not meant to do and the process in which to do it. And a lot of it still months later is being kind of figured out. Uh, and there's a lot of questions around all of that. But clearly you saw a lot of governments, um, you saw the federal government and a lot of local governments uh, step up to say, we recognize that small businesses and operators um, are going to be disproportionately affected by uh, this COVID-19 crisis in ways that we we can't even really foresee, but one way certainly whenever we issue a shutdown or we, uh, we close the normal ways that our economy functions and, and ways that we're able to, to sell our products to people and get out in front of people and market our product, it's gonna have a huge impact. And so how can we somehow offset some of that? Um, and uh, emergency loans is one way, um, but one thing we know about loans is that you have to pay them back, usually with some interest, even if it's a small amount of interest. But for many people, that's the right uh, path. For many people who see a disruption, 
They know that that business in, in all likelihood will come back to a certain degree. So if the loan interest can be small enough, then you can get that cash to bridge the hardship, then get back on the other side. As long as it's not onerous, onerous interest on that loan, you should be able to pay it back in increments as long as the time has been long enough. And that's what the uh, economic injury disaster loans do. They take the loans, they put a very small amount of interest on it, and they spread it out over 30 years. So you'll, you'll never typically be able to go to a bank, uh, typically even other disaster type loans, uh, and get a 30 year uh, payment cycle for a loan. It just is, is unheard of. So they did that to say, we don't, we, this is meant for businesses to stay in business, not to, not to make money off it or to make it a, a really uh, onerous process. Uh, so that's loans. Uh, and then there's also grants. Grants are essentially money that comes to you that you don't have to pay back. Um, and so the government uh, has issued a lot of those, like we said, in the form of um, the Paycheck Protection Program that starts out as a loan and then becomes a grant potentially. So there's even hybrids along the way of doing it. Um, you have other private organizations. You see, you know, the big ones, Facebook and Google are issuing these small business grants to people in their uh, the footprint where they work and where their offices are. Those are that is money, that is income into a business. Uh, also important to realize that if you're a small business or a sole proprietor, like I, I imagine many uh, of you are, um, any income that comes into your business or into you is potentially taxable income. So just because it's coming from a government or a grant or a program, it doesn't mean that it definitely is taxable, but there's a potential for it to, to be taxable. So that's that's something um, that we'll maybe, maybe we can talk about, uh, but something for you to certainly keep in mind. That's uh, <clears throat> as I, Seinfeld has this line that uh, whenever something happens, that's that's next year guy's problem. So the tax on that, that's going to be 2021 guy's problem. Right now, it's about how can we survive this situation, get some money in. So we're looking for as much money as we can. Um, so this is where I was really proud of um, of Waco basically for, for stepping up to the call. So you saw a lot of cities start to do this. Um, city governments have pools of money that they have available to them, either through other grants that they receive as a municipality from the federal government or state authorities. Um, they have tax revenue that they get in. They have, you know, whether it's sales tax, property tax, uh, they receive this money and money that they bring in is money that they can dictate how it's spent. Money that they receive from other bodies, they have to usually jump through certain, ho certain hoops of how that money gets deployed. Um, and they will probably get audited on, the, on those funds that they have. So um, whenever we said to them, to, to the government, said, look, we need to find a way for our small businesses, all small businesses, um, including artists. I mean, a business can be something, if you sell something uh, to people, it is, it is a business. Doesn't matter how much that has been, doesn't matter you know, where you are on the scale of things, it's a business and there needs to be some, some support here. Um, you know, we said, we think this would be a really, a really helpful thing to do on a local level. Um, a couple of benefits to that and a couple of challenges to that. So the benefits to that is unlike what you'd see in a federal government uh, or even at the state level getting a grant where you got to go through multiple layers, you, you know, good luck getting somebody on the phone, uh, it's, you're kind of just a, a number, um, you know, you apply for something, you have no idea where it's coming or how it's coming or where you are in the process. Uh, you know, that's, that's a challenge to a national program. The benefit to a national program is that they're usually dealing with very large amounts of, of available liquidity. And so they can just sort of through the stroke of a pen have unlimited funds available to disperse in these grants. Now, the, the, the downside of a local grant program is that they have to find the money. The money isn't just sitting there. They have to reappropriate it from one place to the other. The benefit of doing it through a local grant is that it's targeted directly to us. It's coming directly from our local governing body. Um, and typically, if you have a question or a need or need help in the process of doing it, you have a phone number you can call with somebody who will answer, who will walk you through it. Um, when they started this, this program, you know, the goal is to get rid of this money. The goal is to get it out into the community as fast as possible. Um, and that's how, they, uh, that's how they designed it to be done. Um, th there are, because of the challenge of having to reappropriate funds, there are challenges in, in how they're able to do it. And that's something that the application is meant to address. And that's what we can, we can talk about. So all that to say, in a very short period of time, you had the city council, you had certain um, 
county commissioners come together and say, yes, we want to take money out of programs that were designated for the future and put it towards a small and create the small business relief grant. They got that money from two sources. Uh, one is from a federal, what they call block grant called CDBG. This is money that is um, taken from the federal government that is given to, not taken from, but the federal government gives it to the local authorities for uh, a specific use in the inner city uh, towards economic development. And so um, there are certain restrictions and ways that money can be done, but they got approval. They requested and got quick approval from the federal government to reappropriate the money they had received and put it into this small business relief grant. Um, so they got a certain amount of money from that. And then they took that amount of money, which was, I want to say it was around $400,000 that they were able to reappropriate from CDBG. And the city said, well, the federal government can give us that. Let's try to match it. Let's do the best that we can to, to pull it from local funds. Um, and so they went to the local um, uh, McLennan County Economic Development Fund, and they took matching grants away from, reappropriated it from there and put it towards this grant. So we had a total of just 800, 800, I think $5,000 total to work in this grant. Um, with the mandate from the council and the, and the county commissioner to, you know, figure out a process that is equitable, that ticks all the boxes that it needs to tick so that when we get audited by the federal government, we're not going to, uh, we're going to have answers for everything, but get this out the door as quickly as possible. Um, and so that's what they did. And they put together a great team of people in the city. Um, now, the challenge working with all different types of businesses is that it's really it's really hard to set a metric that everyone can fall into and answer that can be the same for everyone so even though with the local funds they had a lot more ways that they're able to to give it out to because they're the ultimate ar arbiters of that they took it from their own county funds and, and city funds and did that to make it equitable, they said, we're going to match whatever category we have to do with this other half for the federal grant. We're going to match that requirement. Um, and that way, everyone who applies is on the same playing ground and we can get rid of this full amount of money uh, as equitably as possible. So what you're going to find are these certain like somewhat bizarre types of questions and forms that you're going to have to reply to when you go through it, sometimes because it's, it's about uh, required federally for certain things to be done and sometimes because it's coming from a from the state and local there's certain uh, it's classified as somebody doing business with the county or with the city and so they have certain rules and state Texas state rules that they have to apply by so for instance there's a form I don't recall the name of it but you'll go through it in the process um, that's essentially you're signing that you won't uh, boycott uh, this, the nation of Israel I mean, literally an entire document about boycotting the nation of Israel. And I, I looked at it and I thought, is this like a trick question or wait, is it something about it? No, it's literally, that's it. And, and, and the reason that that's there is because everyone who does business as a contractor with the city has to sign that per state law. So they're not, they're not trying to make it a, a challenge or get, uh, you know, behind your, behind your back, pull something over on you. Um, it's, it's really just, they're trying to do everything they can to take all the boxes they have to take to be able to give this money out to, to small businesses. Um, so a lot of people, when they got through the first phase, they thought, well, what is all this? I don't have this form. I don't have this license. I don't have this thing. If you don't have what it's asking for, it's probably okay. Um, and again, it goes back to the benefit of this being a local, uh, a locally administered program is that if you have questions, you've got resources, you can pick up a phone and call and someone will answer and talk you through it. Um, and, and you've got people like Luann advocating for you on all these different levels to do it. So we can get through the process and I can explain a little bit of, of how we'll do that. So essentially, um, they set a cap and we, we, we mimic the program to what we saw other cities doing. So it, it was typically a focus on very small businesses. So the SBA, the, the federal SBA, uh, defines a small business as fewer than 500 employees, which a you know, 500 person business is quite large. Um, that's how they classify it. So for this grant, they classify a small business as 10 employees or fewer. So it's very, it's really like micro business, which still in the aggregate is, is a lot. Um, it doesn't matter if you're an LLC, if you're a sole proprietor, it doesn't matter if you've sold one painting in your life or you do things, uh, you know, uh, in a, an array of different mediums and forms. Um, essentially, if you have a business, if you sell things for trade, um, even as a side project, um, there is potentially uh, money, money available for you. 
Um, the the amount that you're able to receive, they capped at five thousand dollars. So it's a five thousand dollar grant, and to be clear, it's a grant, not a loan. Uh, the taxability of it um, is a question. So essentially, you we it's still being figured out. So I, if I were you, if you receive money. I would expect that there is a potential for it to be taxed. So, um, but I can't guarantee that it will. And a lot of it because the rules are changing, even as we speak, of how things are going to be taxed. So, just plan on needing to put put, put aside some portion of that for taxes because you you might need that come to whenever you file two thousand and twenty tax return next year. And if you don't receive a ten ninety nine in a form for government, then it will be tax free. So we don't we just don't know the answer to that yet. Um, so that's what to do with the money, and then restrictions on how you spend the money regardless uh, or, or uh, unlike some other programs that you've heard about, there aren't really any restrictions on what you can spend this on. Uh, they're not going to be asking you, they're not going to be following up on, um, you know, receipts for payments and things like that. You're not going to have to justify the, 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 what you spent these funds on. Uh, there are some requirements like staying in business for, you know, a certain number of months afterwards and things like that, but these are going to be, um, mostly self-certified good faith efforts of just wanting to keep keep businesses going. So as you get into the process, you'll see um, what it essentially comes down to is this. They need to just, they need to demonstrate through paperwork that you A, are a business. And again, it could be a sole proprietor. It could be, you know, you don't have to have own, your own entity. You don't have to have your own bank account for your business. It could all be filtered in, but what you need to be able to do is just demonstrate on paper that it is a business. And you can understand why they want to do that because otherwise a lot of people could apply and come in um, and just make up things. And so they need to demonstrate with paperwork. The paperwork that you um, are sending into is going into city officials. You have confidentiality. They will use this for um, grant purposes exclusively. Um, you don't need to worry. The IRS will not be reviewing this. If you submit something on paper that you're worried about, um, it's not going to come back and get you. This is, I don't know. I mean, we've come into some issues where people are hesitant to share sort of personal banking information, under, understandably, or, um, you know, certain receipts for things and everything. Look, Record keeping, doing the best that we can to demonstrate what we have. This is this is good practice for us as, as business people, whether you're an artist or or any, any type of business person. So I would I would look at this as a way of almost a challenge of how can I better keep records for for an unconventional business or this type of business in ways that maybe I couldn't uh, haven't done in the past, because it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of energy. Um, it's really frustrating and annoying, frankly, to keep good documents and records of your business when um, it's, it's really small or it's just starting out or you would much rather be doing literally anything else like most of us. So, um, but it is a good practice to get into and this could potentially be a, a, way, a step into that. Um, so they are going to be looking to document your business's income and your business's expenses. Um, and they, and essentially we'll just be looking for, can we demonstrate with this paperwork that there was this income and there were these expenses, and then they're going to appropriate part of the grant to cover either lost revenue or expenses associated with your business based on the paperwork. Um, and then issue those funds to you as a grant up to $5,000. So, um, that's the premise. Um, and that's what is, is happening just to give you an idea of the, um, uh, like where it where it stands at the moment. So uh, when it when it first opened back in I want to say April, um, the there was about 730 or so businesses that applied in the first uh, week or so, um, and then they got into the process of applying, and some of those kind of decided not to apply and withdrew or kind of fell away or got kind of complex. Um, and then so they they've successfully giving grants to a couple of hundred, I want to say two or 300 businesses to date. Um, and the rest of them are either in process still or um, didn't qualify or voluntarily withdrew. So there is about half the money that they had, that they had sent is still in, is still there in the fund to be sent out, which is why it's going to, as of today has reopened the application portal so that anyone can go on and apply uh, beginning today. So I wouldn't say that as of now, um, 
that there is a, a mad rush to get it done, but the sooner the sooner your application gets in, the sooner you get in line, and the sooner you kind of start processing until until the funds are gone, and when they're gone, uh, for the time being, they're gone. So so that is essentially yeah, that is generally the process. I think that <clears throat> what could be super helpful is uh, if you're interested, if you have specific questions about um, your eligibility or a specific question that they're asking for. I would say a good rule of thumb is to is a, is a couple of things. One, if you look at something and just don't know what the form is or don't know how you should approach it, uh, you can always email Luann anytime who can get in touch with me and I can give my opinion on what to do with that specific thing. We can, I'm very happy to schedule a one-on-one -on -one phone call with anyone. I'm actually working with probably three different artists right now, just trying to, um, understand what portion of this they can potentially go for given their their unique situation uh you know some people that have that do three or four different things but don't have an entity um do a lot of it in cash don't have records don't have receipts don't have ways of, of tracking these things will that work and the answer is maybe maybe not if you don't have any records to show any of of your business activity then that's going to be a challenge but there are things that we can look for um, because again, we can submit with a case, even a narrative case that we write down to the uh, to the city that basically will say, here's my situation, here's why, here's what I have. And my sort of operating um, thought in all of this is for any for anyone, for any artist, for anyone who's who's working hard to get something out, if there's any of, of these funds available, these are um, you know these are our as a community collective funds that have come together. So we, so we want, whether, however small, however large we can get, we want to get as much as we can, but even if it's a small amount, a small amount's better than nothing. So let's, so it's worth the process to go through if, even if it's, even if it's something small. Um, and uh, they, so what'll happen is if you click on the portal, so if you go to COVID Waco, um, let me share my screen with you and show you exactly what's going to happen. While John is pulling that up, I'll remind you of my email address. It's Luann, L-U-A-N-N, -N, at creativewaco.org. And yes, definitely do contact me. My husband and I are going to be going through this process, like probably tonight, because he is a musician who has not played a gig since, well, he's had one gig before the bars closed back down again um, since you know, late February. So um, we will be going through this process, and so I will um, have have been in it myself and I'm glad to help and anything I can't help you with we'll definitely connect with John over. Great. So if you go to COVID Waco, can you see my screen Luann? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. So if you go to covidwaco.com, and this is, in case you haven't been here before, this is uh, Waco and Clinton County's public health district website, which gives you amazing information in general about the, the disease and the progress and everything. So I would highly recommend this site if you haven't been there uh, before. Um, but if you go to this tab that says resources, you'll see this button here, the small business grant program. So click on that. That takes you to the, uh, to the, to the fund uh, guidelines and information. So this is basically gives you the information that I just kind of went over. Um, here's some, you know, some FAQs that can be helpful when you're going around it. Here's the phone number that you call throughout the process if you have any questions at all that's on there. Um, I'm gonna th ask is, questions as we uh -huh. go. John, with this please. thing, if, if you are a sole proprietor, please submit your contact information too. Do our artists need to do that or are you serving in that capacity, you and I serving in that capacity. For, for submitting, sorry, for submitting the, as a sole under proprietor? Frequent, yes, if you see under frequently asked questions, it has that, right, if you are a sole proprietor. Oh, I see what you're saying, yes. Um, so yes, you, we, we can act in that capacity for sure. Okay. Um, th this, this I, would, I would recommend um, sort of, again, this is where it gets a little bit tricky, so I'm glad that we're I'm glad that we're talking. You can you can send it to either of us, and we can go it, or you or you can send it to this email address, and they'll they'll give you some information. This is um, essentially, you know, with a sole proprietor, there's going to be some additional. They're they're probably just going to be walking you through some additional 
documentation that might be formed. So if you don't have a separate business entity with a you know business bank account and all the things that, that you would have with some businesses, they're just going to probably make you aware of that process and can help walk you through it. But we can do that. And if you have any specific questions related to it as a sole proprietor, you can, you can reach out to us. Um, these are some of the forms here. Um, this is that Israel form I was telling you about. So again, it's, 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 it's bizarre, but all that is is because it's treating you as a as a contractor in the city. Uh, that link's broken, so it doesn't help you anyway. It'll get it in there. This is a form twelve ninety five, which again you'll let's see. This this is sort of an ethics commission, so this tells you about it about what that is. Um, so this is basically again a form that's required for you to sign when you're doing business with the government with the city in the state of Texas, which will um, which will you know, everyone has to do to receive funds. And if that's electronic, how does the, how does the Waco process get the information from that? Uh, so this will be something that you can, I believe in the application, we'll, we'll click in, we'll click through there now, but I believe that they will uh, give you those forms to fill out in there that you okay. can download. Okay, then thanks. you can sign them electronically and then upload right. them in your application, or you can go on here, print them out, sign them, scan them, if you need to come to Startup Waco to, um, to access a scanner or anything, you're welcome to. Um, and then you upload them as documents in your application. Great. Same with the W-9, which is basically uh, the form that you use if you're receiving money from any, uh, any, any entity at all. So this will be something to log the income. Which, if you're a contractor, you should already have that anyway. Yep, yep. Um, and then this is just the, the, the form to uh, where, where you're going to receive funds if you do an electronic transfer. Okay. So we won't be able to go through much of the application, I'm realizing, because um, this is a portal walkthrough, because what they did was they give you, they, they, they make you basically watch a video on how to do it, which is actually very helpful. So. This is where you would start. You would just you would you would probably register if you're doing it for the first time, putting your putting your email address, password, and then you go through and do it. Um, the first thing that you'll see is a, uh, a it's about a 30 minute video tutorial of someone in the city walking through the different questions. So they'll be able to answer in that video a lot of questions specifically about the application process. If you so watch that, and then after you go through it, if you have any questions as you start going through it, then this is where we can step in and help, help in that process. Um, let me give you, um, so this is what the application, once you get into it, will look like. So again, this gives you um, definitions of eligibility. This tells you that there are certain um, types of industries that aren't, uh, that aren't eligible. Um, so we can talk about this LMI requirement. So essentially um, one of the, one of the requirements of one of the pockets of money that we have is um, that the funds have to be directed to what they call an LMI household, which stands for low to moderate income or 51% of the business's employees are, so just over a majority are LMI households. Low to moderate income is a defined um, income ratio for, uh, I believe that it's 80% of the area average um, that you have to be at or below to qualify for that. Um, so if you're not, it doesn't even necessarily mean that you won't be eligible for something in the grant. Um, it does mean that they're going to be prioritizing LMI households um, going through. So if, so for instance, if you have a, um, if you hire part-time people uh, to do something and they qualify as LMI, then that's, that's fine. 51% of your, of your employees, or if, if, uh, if you are, that's fine. It, this requires a self-certification. So what that means is that you are going to, as the business owner, be certifying that 51% of your employees are, uh, from LMI households. There's not gonna be much beyond that that's required to show. Um, but it's something it's something to consider as we as we kind of go through it. John, can you, you go, go back to question mm -hmm. five? 
So mm -hmm. that question right there. So what does mm -hmm. that mean? I mean, there's no, a lot of artists so, are starting full-time equivalent. Yeah. So, um, you know, if, if, if you're a sole proprietor and you're the only, you're the only person in the business and you don't have, uh, and let's say you're not LMI, you can go, you can go through, um, and, and, uh, you know, I don't, I don't feel like as, as somebody who's, if you're a sole proprietor and you're not LMI, then that's going to be, it's going to be a challenge because I feel like we're going to fill, um, it's going to fill with LMI, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you wouldn't, that you wouldn't be possible. You might, you might sort of go in a qualification, but holding pattern to see if the rest of the application, because I think, because I know that they are required to prioritize LMI households. Well, what I'm asking about really is the full-time aspect because most artists are not full-time with their creative work. Mm hmm So, yeah, I would, I would, um, so if you're, if you're doing something part-time, I would, um, it's, it's going to be one, it's going to be one of those it's going to be one of those gray areas. I would potentially, um, I would potentially either leave that blank or I would click, um, you know, you, I would, I would click one and then we can have a place where we can put in a justification for that. So if something is, okay. um, part-time, if you're only doing something part-time, but you have the, we can justify that business from the, from the documents, then I think that that's going to be, that's going to be fine. They're not judging it exclusively based on number of uh, employees. So, so, so if you're part-time, let's say not full-time, I think that they would, again, this is, this is where some of this objective, where it does get somewhat subjective that if, if they have a business where it's, it's, um, you know, somebody, one person working part-time, uh, not from an LMI household, they're probably going to give priority to somebody who is to a small business that has either LMI or 51% is working full time and does go to retain that job. Um, I do, but there are certain, there are certain, um, here's, here's my advice on going through it. If you're not sure, like if you don't, if you're, if the honest answer to the question here is that there's not this wouldn't be anything, leave it blank. There are certain questions that you can leave blank and there are certain questions that if you leave blank, it won't let you proceed. Um, if you come up to a question that you're unsure of and it won't let you proceed without that, that's where you wanna reach out for help and get uh, information on, on just advice on the best next step. Okay. Um, I can't tell from this document if this is one of those questions. Okay. So I do know that that main that retaining a full time equivalent position from an L from an LMI household is not a, an exclusive requirement okay. for receiving the grant money. So my expectation is that this would not be a uh, one of those questions that stops the application. Yeah, and it's a, it's one of those gray areas, frankly, because um, you're exactly right. You can't target small businesses, micro businesses, and then not have an allowance in that for, for, for businesses that uh, people are working on the side. Mm -hmm. um, and again, this is a static version of the application. The one that's on the website is dynamic. It, it, it changes and approves or doesn't let you go forward based on your application and in your answers. Um, so again, has a business received funding from any of their federal programs? If you have received something from paycheck protection or the other SBA programs we were talking about. It doesn't mean that you did, are disqualified from this. It just means that you they are going they are going to prioritize businesses that have not received uh, other federal funding. So go ahead, even though it says don't. Well, again, I don't know this. Again, this this is a the fact that it's a static version. Um, then I think we want to. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it will stop you at that. I, okay. I, not, I wish we could find out, but I think that I would. I would well, go through because I. Well, I know Chuck that there and I are. are going to do it tonight, so I'll let you know. Great. <laughs> yeah. Let Let me know. Like this. This is this is put on there. I'm not sure. I, I can't tell you without watching it if that's gonna. Yeah. If that's going to prevent you from happening. But the reality is, I know businesses that have received 
uh, funding from federal programs that have also been approved for the grant. Um, so if that happens, then we need to, we need to, yeah, I would love to know. Mm -hmm. um, again, how much funding you're requesting, this is up to 5,000, but it's going to be based again, base what you're requesting on the documents of what you can. And what do you recommend on that? You just, your sound just got weird. Sorry. Okay. Um, do you recommend requesting the amount that you've lost thus far? So can you hear me? Okay. Okay, so I would recommend um, re re request up to 5,000 of the amount that you are um, essentially justifying with your documents. So what, what, just, what justifies? It would be yeah. money that you spent on things like rent, uh, on supplies. So if, you're a, if you have a studio, then you can rent that. If you work out of your home and you pay rent or, or have a mortgage, um, then whatever portion of that that you use as your studio and workspace could be something that would be calculated as your business, uh, business expense. Um, if you, uh, you know, if you, if you can, if you can show lost revenue, things like gigs that were canceled or comparable gigs, you know, a year ago or last month or last quarter, some comparable amount of time, uh, that you can say, and so everything's been stopped because I'm a musician and I can't play gigs and all the gigs are canceled, all the bars are canceled. You know, even things like, um, I mean, I, again, the more explicit the documents, the better, but it's, but if, even if it's something like a flyer showing that this festival or this bar that I was playing at was canceled, um, then that, that could be suffice to show that there's the, the lost revenue. If you had a canceled contract, even better, because that, that actually puts a value figure on it. Um, so anything that you can demonstrate that shows lost revenue, um, comparable lost revenue, meaning revenue from a similar either time last year or last quarter that like I was making this, I was selling this many paintings uh, at these events and now I'm now I'm selling this much because people aren't going out and people aren't, aren't buying and the galleries are closed and so forth. Um, those would be things that would be considered. Uh, so I would look at, yeah, so I would look at lost revenue. I would look at uh, money that you spent on operations, meaning uh, rent, utilities, uh, business supplies. If you have to purchase, um, uh, you know, any type of supplies, especially this is, this is one place where artists actually may benefit from other, other types of businesses and that they can, you know, they're having to buy all sorts of supplies and painting and um, even audio equipment and things like that. Um, keeping it, it can be demonstrating that expense from a bank account statement, from a uh, receipt that you scan and show. Um, but just justifying those costs will be important. Then I would add those up, um, and and that would that would equal the amount that you're requesting. Um, so some of these are just some more. Uh, questions of how it's going to help you sustain operation. Do you have any suggested Back, language um, for that? Do you have any suggested language for sorry. how it will help you sustain operations? Just to say. Sorry, I'm just like. It's like John's having sound problems. There we go. Sorry. Sorry, Lily. Could you repeat that for me? Yeah. Um, do you have any suggested language for the question about how does it help you sustain operations? You know, I think that um, no, not, not 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 really. If you just if you just are honest about what it is, if you say that you know I, uh, you know, if you sell if you sell artwork, and you can say you know um, I hope to uh, be able to attend you know, other, other markets and other places to sell in, in the future or, or galleries to do it. But, um, you know, until, until we get to that point where I can sell my art in person, like I've historically done, um, you know, this will, this will help you maintain. That. I think you can just be honest there and just tell your, your story and you can keep it brief and simple. I think all these questions and just keep it brief and simple. Okay. And who actually is doing the evaluating on it? There is a, um, there's a small team um, of folks in the city that they've, that they've brought in that are actively looking over. I don't think that they, 
anticipated it being such such a full job when they got so many applications in it. And, and, and again, as you can already tell from the very beginning of the application, it's, it's, it's tricky because it's, um, you know, uh, things, questions that can go any number of ways and, mm -hmm. and, and it's hard to know exactly how to do it without, um, you know, without, without some, some guidance. Mm -hmm. so, so they're there to provide guidance. And again, their goal being, is there a way to get money to this person in this business? That's why I think if you come to a question where the application stops you or, um, you're just unsure what to put in there because it doesn't apply directly, but maybe there's a way to apply. Then that's where you would sort of reach out for for help and, and clarity on that. We can and we can hopefully provide it. And I mean, I think what I hear you saying, John, is that you know these are local people, they're neighbors, they want mm -hmm. to help us, they want to give the money to right. us. Um, they want to give the money to the people who need it most, and there have been some decisions made on how to how to calculate that but in general right. don't assume that these are trick questions um, mm -hmm. this isn't dealing with the IRS who's trying to catch you in in some kind of mis misdeed um, it's yep. people who want to help you that's right that's right that's 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 exactly right and um, just to give you I, I told you uh, they were qualifying what uh, low to moderate income household uh, stands for so these are the these are the current figures and these are these are the same figures across the board for, for everyone. So based on your household size and then income in that household, this is what, and this is of what course, qualifies children that. are included in this number, right? So correct. If you are correct. a single parent with seven children. You are eight. Yes, okay. that's right. That's right. And again, if you, you know, this, this language here, I'll, I'll be honest with you as I'm going through it with you as well. It's like, it seems pretty cut and dry and it seems pretty clear um, that one of these things has, has to happen. And I think the goal of the funding is that it will. Um, I also know that, that you can potentially qualify. So if you come into this issue and there, and it's a question of, do I qualify for LMI? Should I continue? Um, you know, that's something that you want to flag up and I'm going to actually try to get some more, some more Clarity. I think I think we can all agree that we want to help the most um, the most needy among us in the in the in the in the area. So I think that's the goal of this. But I do know that um, just because you don't qualify in a certain way doesn't mean that you know that you're completely out of the program. Right. And you know the worst the you know, the worst they can do is say no. And, you know, right. <laughs> if you need the money, apply. Right. Right. Oh, cool. So anyway, Keep so it goes on in these most the of the application. Oh, sorry, what's that? I was going to say, let's just try to wrap up in 10 minutes. It's uh, and, uh, Great. So, yeah, I mean, I, and I, I think that it's going to be easier. I mean, because some of these, I'm, I'm, I'm maybe hesitant to even go through all of it because some of it is going to be about, um, you know, very specific to each company. So I, my, my recommendation would be go through, um, understand, like, you know, understanding what we've talked about. Um, if you have any questions or come against something that's going to be, you know, these are these are some of the uh, documentation that they can um, ask for. Things like, uh, you know, insurance if you provide transportation, if you have insurance, um, a business income tax return, um, business registration if you have that, uh, lease agreement or or uh, you know if you have a commercial space. Um, bank statements again these are for these are for if you have a if you have a business not if you have a uh a sole proprietorship so there's going to be a separate um sort of process for that so similar but they're not going to be asking you for a business license or business uh commercial lease things like that um and the last step is just all the certifications that you need to understand about applying these are what they call self certifications <clears throat> and then that's it can you go back to the section keep scrolling back slowly it's the only section i can see that you might be able to give us some insight on that would help and as much as if you're filling this out, do as much as you can before contacting me or John, because then we can 
focus in on the, the parts where you need to help the most. So this is this area, the funding request itself. So it's going back to what you were talking about before. So mm -hmm. some of this we've they've, we've we've um, already answered once before. So it's easy mm -hmm. enough. And then so this would be where uh, that you would talk about, right? If you were going to do a narrative about full time versus part time, this is where you would talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, yes, and I think that. Um, again, this is all going to be uploaded like to the site. So anything you write in here will get captured in that, in that thing. So I think unless they give us a, a place to either email or send it or something to attach in, this would, this would be a good place to do that. I, I actually have a question in going through it as to this date, I think should be, right. should has be been June expanded, yeah. um, from this reopening. So that's why this, this might, this might be an older version of the actual application that's up there. Okay. Um, so, but they basically said that they, they see this uh, sort of this hardship happening beginning around the 17th of March. And so that's what those are the fun, the, what you spent and the lost revenue and everything from this date forward. Right. And again, check the application, but I think that it should go out right. further than that. This was one, this is the one that was released in the beginning of April mm -hmm. um, or middle of April. So um, yeah, this would be a good, this would be a good place to, to do that. Um, and again, I, you know, I want I should, you know, I want to set expectations that if you are a sole proprietor as, as an artist and um, you know, it's not LMI, meaning you're not low to moderate income, it's, it's a part-time uh, venture. It's, it's again, does not mean that you're not potentially uh, able to receive funds from this, but it does mean that it will probably be, they're probably going to prioritize those businesses or even sole proprietors that, um, that, that have that. I would say something like, I mean, uh, I don't know the exact thing, but quite a few, if not the majority so far um, of businesses have been sole proprietors. So it is not, even though I think this was written for business entities, it is not absolutely not a requirement. But the where it would come in though is that with your income, that's going to include all your jobs, right? To determine mm -hmm. whether you're low to moderate income. If you're working, you know, at a bookstore and um, you know, as a transcriptionist online and mm -hmm. as a musician, it's all three of those that will be added together to determine whether you're LMI. But if the only area that's been impacted by COVID is the musician, it's the musician mm -hmm. money that you're declaring here. So mm -hmm. that, yeah, that's yes, and I and I th I think that your you know if you got other works again, they're they're taking this information and trying to determine where the greatest um, need is. So if you if you're somebody who, who's been able to maintain other work and maintain your income but then this particular venture is, is hurt, you're probably not gonna be prioritized over someone who maybe this is their entire livelihood of business and they, and they need that. And that's probably appropriate. Right. It doesn't mean that it's not, it's right. nothing can happen, but it does mean that um, it's probably gonna be prioritized. Right. Um, but if all of your jobs are sole proprietors, then it's not just yes. artists, it's all, you know, it would all count. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. it's just, and, and John, would you just define what a sole proprietor is for? Sure. For the so, so um, anyone is able to start a business. They don't need a government license or entity, depending on certain types of businesses do, but you're able just to take something and sell to someone else or create as an artist. And so if you do not have a, a separate business entity classification, you will be called treated for tax purposes, what the government calls a sole proprietor. Um, and sole proprietorships can be quite large. It just means from a tax purpose, you don't have a separate business entity. You don't have a separate, um, you know, you don't probably operate under a separate business account, although you could. You could have a separate account that you operate all of your business expenses through as a sole proprietor. And it's I really just a, that. <laughs> yep, yep. It's a, it's a, again, this goes back to, imagine if we had six months ago gone through a, um, you know, the, the, base, the rules of, of record keeping for sole proprietors or for artists and what that looks like. Cause I, you know, you're focused so much on doing the work that you're not often thinking of how do I structure the business part of this. But then 
for something like this, and again, this is an unusual situation applying for a, for a grant, but um, all the things that it asked for, just like documenting income, documenting expenses, things like that, you'd have them all in one place and it would be a lot, a lot simpler. And it becomes very important when you do have an LLC, or, which is a form of, uh, of a business entity that, you know, just getting in that practice of running everything through a, a separate account, through a separate thing and paying yourself from that. These are things that become requirements as you, as you, you know, change your, your uh, designation. Right. So basically, if you if your business income is rolled into your personal income tax, you work by yourself, you don't have employees, and your business income is rolled through your personal income tax, you are a sole proprietor. Um, and it does. It, it makes it a little. It makes it a lot easier in some ways to be in business, uh, but it also can make it a little more. Mm -hmm. um, complicated at times like this when you're trying to prove something. Imagine how easy it would be if a sole proprietor had had for the last two years a separate bank account that they were running all of their in and all of their out mm -hmm. through. Then when it came time to apply for this grant, all we'd have to do is just show bank mm -hmm. statements. <laughs> yeah, and so yeah, and so like for this, they're asking you, you know, for bank say like maybe you need your bank statements to justify, or if you if you operate on cash or Venmo or PayPal, you have your PayPal statements or Venmo statements, and you've got, you know, someone giving you five dollars to you know reimburse you for a burger that you had together, and then you got someone buying a painting right next to it. What you'll have to do is print out that statement, and you'll have to somehow highlight for them to see like this was the business, this was the business, this was personal, this was. So it's just a level of of complication um, and I can understand someone's hesitancy in wanting to send them a bank statement um, if you feel um, you know feel free to didact or or black out account numbers or things like that if you want it's really again everyone's under under signed NDA and their your, your stuff is protected it's not going out to anyone beyond the city for the purposes of this grant um, but I can understand that so so feel free to do to do that. And if they say, oh, we need something more, you've taken it out. Don't obviously do your name because then right. it could be anyone's but or your address maybe, but yeah. um, do what you need to do to feel comfortable in submitting that information. Okay, great. Um, we've had one live participant, which is Judy. Judy, do you have any questions? Um, there we go. The only thing is, is that, um, where do we actually get for the sole proprietorship for the application? Is that, I mean, cause I didn't see anything on there specifically on that. Yeah, so they're, they're not gonna, the application we were reviewing um, was written for uh, a business entity. That's why all the questions are, are geared that way. And so I, I need to, I need to figure out, and I don't know the answer to the question if they have a separate application or there's just a separate designation that you that you basically say uh, send to them saying I'm a sole proprietor to do it. So I would I think the rule still applies. Like if you log into that at COVID Waco and you go through the process um, and they haven't yet said as a sole proprietor uh, giving you that option to designate, and so all none of the questions are lining up or making sense then that's when you would just, just reach out and see, I'm going to, right after this call, I'm going to go on there and just say, Hey, when somebody emails you as a sole proprietor, what do you send back? Or is there any specific information that, that they have? Because I, I thought that the forms of the application I had seen before were a bit more general in their terminology of how they were classifying things, whereas clearly you're correct. It, that one is, is showing almost exclusively uh, for, for different business entities. So I would, I would want to be, Clear on that, but I but I also know the fruit of all of this has been that at least half or more of the folks that have gotten grants have been sole proprietors. Right. So if you if you don't if you don't designate if you don't go through a process to create a business, you are a sole proprietor. Just by default, mm -hmm. you're a sole proprietor, and there's nothing you need to prove that. Um, mm -hmm. But yes, we'll 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 double check. What? Yeah, because if they're asking you for a business license or a certain filing, whatever, you won't have that, you and that yet. won't be required of you. Although hopefully you've been declaring your earnings to the IRS through a Schedule C um, mm -hmm. where you are recording your, your business earnings. So if somebody is paying you a paycheck, then that shows up on W-2 forms that you get. 
others, you know, give you 1099s if you're contracting. And then those 1099s are what come together on the Schedule C that you turn in with your income tax. So that would be what you would use for your most recent year of income taxes, whether it's 18 or if you've already done 19, to show how much you earned as a sole proprietor. That's where that's where that shows up. Um, that's right. And that's what you can right. use to help show lost income. That's right. And that might be, a um, again, an extra step that you'll have to go through as a sole proprietor is essentially say, if you have another job or two jobs, you'll, you'll, you'll show a schedule C from your income tax return. And then you'll have the W2s that go along with that. So they'll understand that the difference is income attributed to the business. And if you're being paid in cash and you're not recording it on paying income taxes on it, then you're actually breaking the law. So they're probably yeah. not going to be in a big rush but, to give you money to thank you for but that. But honestly, honestly too, I, um, you know, I've worked with several businesses going through this and it wasn't, um, you know, they started their business in, in 2019. So they don't have an, they don't have a tax return to do it and they haven't yet had to file for their 2019 taxes. So they're having to show that through bank statements. Um, which again, they're allowed to, they're, they're accepting. We just have to figure out how can we best demonstrate. Obviously a, a tax return would be the easiest. Um, the next easiest would just be showing it from things. So if you, if you have formed before February 15th of 2020, um, you're eligible. So maybe even if you just started selling in January, you won't have to file until 2020. You technically are eligible still. Judy, did that answer your question? Yes, I, it sounds like we're all on the search. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It is. It, this is what I mean by like, they're trying to get everything lined up that they can submit when they get audited for how they're doing it. But their ultimate goal, like Luann said, is to get this out. So if there are questions, don't give up. Don't get frustrated. Let's find, let's find out the answer. Um, you've got people helping to support. And I know that the people that are going through and vetting it are also on everyone's side. So, you know, we'll, we'll get to an answer. We'll get to the bottom of it. Yeah, but that's a good reason to go ahead as soon as possible. So it gives us mm -hmm. maximum time to get those answers um, and get your application complete um, before that's the right. money runs out. And, you know, honestly, if you've not been paying taxes on your sole proprietor income, you know, I, go ahead and apply anyway. But, you know, again, the worst that can happen is to hear no. Yeah. Is that what you would recommend, John, or do you have a different recommendation? Absolutely. No, I think it's, I think that's right. I think that's right. And hopefully, you know, as you go through, I just, yeah, I just want to say before throwing in the towel or getting frustrated, whatever, just, just reach out and say, this is where I'm getting hung up and let's see if we can, you know, figure it out together. All right, cool. Thank you so much, John. Appreciate mm -hmm. it. And then for everybody else, if you have questions um, or need anything, again, if you're an artist, start with me. Luann, L-U-A-N-N, at creativewaco.org. Um, if you're working in some other business that's not arts related, then go ahead and go to John. And John, what's your email address? It's uh, John, J-O-N, at startupwaco.com. Great. Thank you again, John. Okay. Always good to see your face down the street. You too. Thanks, Luann. Bye, everyone. Bye.